And she showed up and we sat down in a cafe and I let her know that I knew that she was the guilty party. The person that was supposed to be helping me put this fire out was the one pouring the gasoline on it. And when I told her what I knew and what I was gonna do to her, she peed herself. I started as a wholesaler in 95 by myself. Then I got a three car trailer. Then I got a 10 car carrier. Then I got another 10 car carrier. Then I got a Beechcraft Bonanza and I start flying to Louisiana and Houston. I love flying. And, and I'm, I'm a rolling circus. And so I've been doing this that long. Made a great impression in Texas, Houston, big markets, Oklahoma, the region, right? Becoming a national company has by far been the hardest thing that I've ever tried to tackle. Because when you're as strong as we are in our zone, you go to Florida and they're like, give me the what? Give me the VIN, you haven't heard of it? We're the biggest thing ever. No, nope, don't know who you are. Now dealers all know, but the public have no idea. If you go poll 10 people or 100 people in Dallas, Fort Worth or Houston, seven of them, eight of them will know, that we'll have brand recognition. You go do that in Florida, 100, you might get five. So we have to start from scratch and it's, it's hard on the old ego. Went to California, started, started up, because obviously California, Southern California is 15 million people. It's the car market, everything's great. I've got, I've got to take down California. We have five offices in California. We made a great partner with KLOS, the big rocker there. They loved the radio show. They liked my sassy talk. It was opposite of what my expectations were. I didn't get attacked by liberals. I didn't get, um, I didn't have death threats by snowflakes. I ran into a lot of good people in California and I'm glad we're out there. It's hard to grow this thing nationally. So in order to do the 100,000 cars a year, I'm going to have to be as effective in DC, Philly, Florida, Colorado, all over, you know, you've got the dealer world and you've got the public world. To become a household name across the country costs a lot of money. I mean, we're talking a gazillion dollars and that's when Venture Capital Man shows up. And we'll throw goofy money at your goofy idea for a goofy cut. Let's try it. And I did not take, I didn't do it. I did this organically. I kept farming my own and spending my own money. So when we go into a market and we blow a half a million dollars trying to burn our way in, it's m real money. It's not fake money. That's the difference between us and Carvana. We make a profit. They lose their ass because they're trying to boil the ocean. And we're trying to boil the swimming pools one at a time. I was a self-made millionaire at 26 years old. I bought these dealerships. Life was grand. At 32, I had a terrible motocross accident. Broke my back. Mother dies. Wife leaves me. Dog dies. Controller embezzles $2 million. I mean, I've got a, it's a bad country and western song. I'm in Vernon, Texas, in a wheelchair. What do I do? And I'm out for six months getting well, and I find out that I'm broke. Bank calls me. Hey, John, this is Doug Eller at Chase Bank. And we've got Mary in New York and Susie in Chicago and all these people on the phone. And I'm like, what's going on, guys? Hey, we're showing that you're about $2 million overdrawn. And this is when I'm still in a wheelchair, still recovering at home um, from the accident. I'm like, well, that can't be. I know we have this much money in this company and this Chevy store and this and that. Like, I know you're right, but I've got to an answer for this. So I said, okay. So I called my wholesale company controller, my Chevy store controller, Ford and Dodge store controller, and I left the main controller out of it because I was suspect of her. And I brought them all in a room and we did an audit. And at the end of that day, I was wheeling from work product to work product, literally balancing the checkbook, reconciling drafts versus real and, and, and counting working capital. And I saw hers. And then I went over, I kept them apart because I didn't want them to compare notes in case what the bank was saying was correct. Long story short, I go workstation to workstation, add up the negative that each one of them was showing me, and guess what the number was? Two million dollars. Bank was right. I was wrong. So instead of letting them tell each other what they saw, I was like, okay, that's cool. We got it. Y'all get on out here. Go different ways. I knew I was done. And if they cross-referenced each other, they would have known I was done. And then 
all the employees at the dealerships would have known I was done, and that wasn't going to give me time to make a plan. I didn't know where the money went. I could not figure it out. Once I did figure it out, it was too late. The lady that was helping me, it's like the nurse that's going around putting poison in the patients. The lady that was helping me manage the money was the thief. So I'll never forget, I was like, Susie, meet me at this restaurant and bring that box of titles with you. I've got to bring them to the bank. And this is in 2005. And she showed up and we sat down in a cafe and I let her know that I knew that she was the guilty party. The person that was supposed to be helping me put this fire out was the one pouring the gasoline on it. And when I told her what I knew and what I was gonna do to her, she peed herself in the restaurant. She had on blue jeans and they just soaked, which made me feel even worse because I knew I was right. I already knew I was right, but that was validation. When you wet yourself, you know you're guilty. So uh, I got with the bank and said, we're bankrupt. We can file bankruptcy or we can sell these assets that I have and we could just control the bankruptcy. I trust you, you trust me. You know I didn't do this. This was a, this was a product of me being out of the office for six months. So we sold all the assets. We did a controlled bankruptcy without filing bankruptcy. And I went back to this dealership in Vernon, Texas called Vernon Auto Group and started back there. And I'm like in a wheelchair. I'm like, how am I going to fix this little thing in Vernon, Texas? And I was watching King of Cars on A&E and the Chopper show. And I called Tobin Dodge in Las Vegas. Salesman answered the phone. Said, how many of your sales come from that show? He said, all of them. Okay, called back, new car sales please. Hello, how many of your sales come from the show? All of them, called them back three times, all of them. Like, okay, the show's working well for Tobin Dodge, so I need to come up with a show. And I always had the gift of gab, and I did some stand-up when I was younger, listen to Stern, listen to Cowherd, listen to Rush Limbaugh. I'm like, I'm gonna do a Saturday show. People were always impressed with my ability to bid cars on the come, I'm gonna do it on the radio, and that was 18 years ago. And I was in a wheelchair, and that's how all this mess started. In 05, Top Gear was not on in the United States. I'm in Denmark visiting my wife's family, or actually at that time she, I was engaged to her, and I'm staying up at night watching TV in Europe, and here's Top Gear. I'm like, well, I should just use the name Top Gear. So the radio show was called Top Gear. And then when they came to the States, they had a trademark on it, and I had to change the name to Real Deal. And then I noticed that everybody started Real Deal and Real Deal, because the auto space is so crazy competitive. So the next time, when I came up with Give Me the Vin, I'm like, I'm not telling anybody this one. And I went into the trademark office and got, Give Me the Vin, Send Me the Vin, Text Me the Vin, Send Us the Vin. I went to GoDaddy and got about 40 renditions of Give Me the Vin, because I, I knew it was going to work, and I knew everybody was going to copy me. And truth is, I was the first sight unseen automated digital buying from the public that had ever existed. Carvana completely copied me, then everybody just copied it. You know, now it's everywhere. Now it seems normal, but when I started it, I remember Bob Holland said he was helping me with money back then. And I explained to him what we were doing. I'm like, Bob, we're buying cars without touching the cars from individuals. He's like, well, that's crazy. That's the most crazy thing. I won't use the word that he, I can't believe you're doing this. That'll never work. I said, Bob, you're financing the gay wedding. What do you mean? I said, I'm, you're helping me with money. I'm paying you interest on money. And you're not just hearing about this. You're doing it with me. We don't tell me that. So we got to a point where we didn't need his money anymore. And he wanted the hell out of it. Because when I explained him what we were really doing, taking that much risk, buying cars from Suzy Q Public through an internet terminal and buying them and paying them without touching them, it sounded crazy. And now it's normal. But we did invent it. As much as I respect Carvan and those guys, when they run those ads, they hired one of my managers. They completely stole our playbook. I mean, their, their TV commercial is what we've been doing for years. They just put a gazillion dollars in advertising behind it. But where they helped me, and thank you, was they made it normal. We used to spend so much time convincing customers it wasn't real. Oh, so I went to the internet and I put in my VIN number and your machine said 32,000 and a guy's gonna show up at the door with 32,000. Yeah, right. So we had to spend all this time convincing them that it is real. But today, it's very real because Carvana made it real. 
When you get a ticket, it might look something like this, but the first thing that you need to do is take a picture of that ticket and send it to 305 305. That will get the ticket clinic on your case immediately. They've got brick and mortar offices in Georgia, Florida, and California, but they can help you find a ticket no matter where you get it in the United States by helping you find a local attorney that will do everything they can to help you avoid costly fines, insurance premium increases, points on your license, risk of suspension, even jail time. They've helped me out with this ticket and many others and a lot of my friends as well. So check them out now at the link in the description below or again, text your ticket it to 305-305 to get the ticket clinic on your case. They are the perfect partner in your fight against any speeding ticket.